Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, as we are here to celebrate this life, and we are grateful because when we came in, um, we heard the conversation and the liveliness of the conversation. And um, that's a blessing uh, to be able to come together and be able to um, celebrate life. Because that's what life is, a celebration. Um, my name is John Jackson. Not Al Roker. <laughs> I know when I walked in, some of you were like, Al? <laughs> and you were going to call Sally like, that's amazing. <laughs> uh, and some of the young people who are looking, ask mom or dad, they'll tell you who Al Roker is. Um, but I will be at the back of the, at this, at the uh, I'll be back over here if you want to take pictures and send them to, <laughs> send the people at work like, look, I really was at a funeral and Al Roker was there, look. Um, that's fine. Uh, but that, my name is John Jackson and I am the chaplain of Mercy New Life Hospice. And it was my esteemed pleasure to be able to walk with this family during this time. And we were grateful to be able to be at bedside and to spend time and to smile and to watch the love and the care. Um, my first introduction to Miss Sally um, Sorry. was <laughs> my, my first introduction to Miss Sally uh, when I walked in, and Lisa, who's working today, sends her love. Thank you. Um, the nurse Lisa, when I first walked in, she said, JJ, you have to meet Sally. And then Lisa said, and I was like, all you got to do with it, you know, and, and Miss Sally was like, <laughs> so we, we fell in love with her after that, we were done, we were done, so we were grateful for, and her daughter, uh, one of my co-workers um, had brought in a stuffed animal, and he asked me, Cullen, um, who once again, he says his love, uh, Cullen had asked me, he said, John, can you do me a favor? And it was a stuffed monkey, and um, it was a huge monkey. And I, and I, he was like, "Can you please uh, take the monkey in for me and put it in the workstation?" I said, "No problem." And I sure enough did, and I carried the monkey on my back. And of course, Sally's daughter said, "I see him with a monkey. You look at that guy with the monkey on his back." <laughs> and so when mom, she just told me, she said, "When mom told me that you were doing the service, I was like, oh, is he going to have a monkey on his back?'" I was like, "No, no." <laughs> No, probably later, but not now. Um, we had the chance to be able to spend time with Ms. Rose, and, and, and as I shared with you all, life is a precious gift that is given by God to us. And sometimes there's measures of when times don't always seem as though they go our way, but God still gives us life. And we are grateful for being able to walk in and hear the life that was still being spoken amongst his family and friends. At this time, let me uh, give you a scripture coming from a familiar scripture, the 23rd Psalms. And on behalf of Mercy New Life Hospice, our entire staff, from Ms. Deb Crayley, our manager of the Hospice Center, to uh, Ms. Becky, who was our director, um, to all of the nurses and our aides who took the time to watch over mom, watch over Miss Rose, um, and to Mr. Hempel and this and this entire <coughs> team here that's taking care of this family. Our prayers are with you. Our prayers will continue to be with you as we walk as we walk with you during this journey. Twenty third Psalms, which is very familiar, simply reads this way. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, 
and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Our gracious God and Heavenly Father, as we come praying and asking, Father, for your love, your peace, and your comfort. God, we ask that that love and peace and comfort be seen, Father God, not just today with this family, but God be seen, Father, amongst them after today, after loved ones have ceased to call, others have ceased to come by. Father, we pray that you surround them with your grace, your love. Watch over Gerald, watch over Sally, watch over their children. God, give them the affirmation and confirmation of your Holy Spirit and your love that was granted by Jesus Christ. We pray this in your name. Amen. 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 I'd ask the family that they have anyone that would like to have some words of comfort the same. The family has not designated anyone that would like to have words. But if you are here today and you would like to share some memories or some encouragements, we ask that you please come at this time and do so. Sorry, Kelly. <laughs> my words are right here, but they've never come on my mind. <laughs> well, I'm, I am assured, um, number one, from just a short time of meeting Gerald and, Sher and Sally, Sally um, this family is not short with the words. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that you all have very, and, and at some point um, during this time, call each other, reflect, give some reflections. Um, a lot of times families can go, some families can go back to being normal and we oftentimes forget about the ones who are still here and still dealing with this journey. So reach out to each other. Remind each other that someone is with, with you. Yes, Miss I, I just want to say that I'm not going to stand if you don't mind. That's fine. Um, Rose, as growing up, my three, uh, two brothers, my brother Jerry and my bro younger brother Danny and I were mostly taken care of by Rose. She was kind of the overseer of us in our day to day care and uh, when I was growing up because I'm 10 years younger than Rose so that's my memory with her been my whole life but as she as we got older it seemed like the age didn't uh, matter anymore and we walked a lot of uh, miles together on our walks when she'd come out especially when she came out from California and stay with me and we'd walk every day about three miles and we always went on a lot of shopping excursions. <laughs> we did love our shopping. And uh, up until not too long ago, we shopped till we dropped. And, and eating out, and we had some fun times. Always our families, when we got together for reunions and whatever, weddings, even funerals, we always had a good time. Just a lot of fond memories. They certainly were. Thank you, Miss Sally. One of the things that um, Sally and her daughter shared was um, John, my aunt, my sister, had a great heart. She loved being a servant. She loved being helping people. Seeing this, seeing you all here today, various ages, shows a love that goes um, with caring for our loved one. Allow me to give you a um, some words of encouragement, and then I will end with a song. Is that okay? That's wonderful. Um, Ecclesiastes, the third chapter of Ecclesiastes. Um, it reads this way. For there's, to everything there's a season, a time, a purpose under the sun. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and time to gather stones together. 
a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to a time to loose and a time to get, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep quiet and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Verse number 11 of the third chapter of Ecclesiastes, it says, for God has made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their hearts that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Brothers and sisters, loved ones, appreciate the time that you have. Every moment, every walk, every conversation, appreciate those moments because time is the one thing you cannot get back once time is gone it's gone so embrace every moment every second that you have you say well John how do you know that I tell this story many many times when I first came here I was 27 years old and I was pastoring at the church where I pastor at still right now and I would get on my knees and jump up and start my day. Now, at the age of 47, my kids will come in and they'll see me on my knees and they go, Dad, what are you doing? Are you still praying? I'm like, no. They go, why are you on your knees? Because I'm trying to get up. Because <laughs> time doesn't wait on anyone. I have a junior now at Amherst High School. And um, when she was a little kid, I see little kids here. She was a child. She would get on my back and she would ride my back. They're all she she would ride my back like a little horse, and I would let her just ride my back. We all have fun. Now she'll run downstairs. She go, "Daddy, catch me!" I'm like, "No," because <laughs> time changes. So every moment that you have, every hour that you have, every second that you have, every conversation that you have. Embrace those moments, embrace those times because no one can take those away from you. Spend your time embracing those moments that, can, that are memories for your soul. Because it's what life gives us. One of my favorite scriptures that I still use today, and the church, they know my favorite scripture, is out of John the 10th chapter, verse number 10. It says, the thief comes that you may kill still, they may come to kill still and destroy. But I come, meaning Christ comes, that you may have life and may have life more abundantly. If you look at the word life, drop the E, drop the L, sandwich in the word life, two letters, one word, if. Life is full of ifs. Ups, downs, challenges, but God says, I come that you may have life full of ifs and may have life more abundantly. So enjoy your life and all the ifs that goes with it. Um, the story I shared with that is enjoying life and, and what comes with it. The story I share is uh, my youngest daughter, who's now in the seventh grade at Amherst Junior High, um, she wanted to go on her first roller coaster some years ago. And um, Miss Alex, she said, Daddy, I want to go on my first roller coaster. So we went to Amp we went to Cedar Point, and she picked out the roller coaster that's, that's blue and white, the uh, uh, court screw. <laughs> court screw. You know what it is because your head hurts too. <laughs> and I just dreaded it. I was like, oh. She was like, that's the one I want to go on, Dad. I'm like, oh, man. And so we get in the line, and she's laughing, and she's smiling. She's so excited, her first roller coaster. And I'm like, ugh. <laughs> and, and we get on the roller coaster, and she's sitting next to me. And she looks at me, and she's smiling. And I just kind of give her the stink eye look. <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this. And you know, my other daughter's laughing, because she knows what the face is. And she's like, ha ha. I couldn't pay her enough to get on the roller coaster for me. So. I'm looking at my daughter, and we, it starts moving. And as it's moving, she 
She goes, why are we moving? <laughs> and I said, it's a roller coaster. <laughs> and it starts going a little faster. She goes, why are we going so fast? I said, Maybe because it's part it's of the roller coaster. <laughs> and as we're starting to go up the hill, she says, why are we going to be hill, Daddy? I said, buddy, it's the roller coaster. This is what you chose. You we get to the top of the hill, and we're going about to go over the first hill. And the little girl who picked out this roller coaster, the little girl who said she wanted to go on the roller coaster, the little girl who said this is the roller coaster she wants to do, she yells out to the top of her voice, let me off. <laughs> it was too late. She's screaming, she's hollering, she's crying, and she looks over her strong dad, and I'm screaming, and I'm hollering, and I'm crying. We get to the end of the roller coaster, and I look at my daughter. She's wiping tears from my eyes. She's wiping the sweat off. I look down at her with a big old grin on my face now. I said, so, what you think? She looked at me, and she said, let's do it again. <laughs> to finish the story, I didn't do it. I was done. But she spent the rest of the day on a roller coaster. She realized I could do this. I didn't want to no more. <laughs> I was done. <laughs> Miss Rose came to the end of a roller coaster. All the ups, all the downs. But she leaves you all to continue to live your life. Continue to be on this journey. Continue to be on this roller coaster of life and enjoy it. One of the things I learned on the roller coaster of life, and one of the things I learned about the roller coaster, um, you know, my, my oldest daughter, who thinks she's like the guru of roller coasters, she she said, Dad, the one of the problems that you have when you're on the roller coaster is the reason why your neck hurts, the reason why you get all stiff and all upset, is because you don't learn how to enjoy it. The whole time you're sitting there all, <laughs> she said, but think about the ones who are having the fun are the ones that are going with it and waving their arms and going up and going down. They learned how to relax. And I, it, it kind of fits with life. We're going to go through some ups. We're going to go through some downs. Learn how to go with it. And realize that you're not on this roller coaster by yourself. You have families and friends. You have Christ that rides along with you. Let me give you this song. Um, <clears throat> and now the end is near, so I face the final curtain. My friends, I make it clear. I state my case, of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I travel each and every highway, and more, much more than this, I did it my way. Regrets, I had a few, but then again, too few to mention. I did what I had to do, I saw it through without exemption. I planned each every course, each every step along the byway. And more, much more than this, I did it my way. Yes, there were times, I'm sure you knew, when I bit off more than I could chew. But through it all, without a doubt, I ate it up and spit it out. I faced it all, and I stood up tall, and I did it my way. Let's bow our heads. Our gracious God, our Heavenly Father, life is a challenge. And life does present us with various obstacles. But God, we are so grateful that we're not on this roller coaster by ourselves. We have family and friends. We have loved ones. God, that we have you. That Father will walk with us and talk with us every step of the we thank you for Miss Rose that Father has come to the end of her journey. And now she's resting in you. And God, as we go through our life, let us find rest 
and celebration of what God you present to us. We pray this in your name.